If you've just joined us, we're giving you a preview to Oscars in Madison, an Academy Awards gala filled with all the glitz and glam of Hollywood. All the festivities lead up to live coverage of the Oscars telecast at the Madison Art Cinemas. Here to talk about the connection of literature in both print and in movies are Arnold Gorlick from the Madison Art Cinemas and Roxanne Cody from R.J. Julia Booksellers. Welcome. It's great Hi, to Jocelyn. have you. Hello, Jocelyn. Hello, Jocelyn. Let's talk about the trend here. We're seeing more and more books making it into films. What's going on? Well, you know, I think that the literature has been so rich, but never fueling movies the way it is now. And one of the fun stories about it is War Horse, which was a book published in the early 80s, sold 50,000 copies in 25 years. They made it into a play and a movie, and it sold a million copies. And it's a kid's book. It is. Right. My daughter's reading it right now, as a matter it's great. of fact. So, Arnold, are we seeing this because... Um, Film, m people who are making films are seeing that people do like to read and see the movie at the same time? Well, it's, uh, they just realized in Hollywood that they've been ignoring <laughs> a demographic of people who read. Usually that means people who are older, employed, earning income, rather than just teenagers who read comic books. They are now going for that market very heavily, and that means transliterating books to film. And they both are literature. Movie is based on the written word, Books are based on the written word. We're in the same business. You're right, absolutely. Let's talk about the two most nominated movies this year, The Artist and Hugo. Uh, it is, uh, Hugo, I think, has 12 nominations. The Artist has 10. Ten. Let's take a look at Hugo right now. Both films, though, are different, but also share a very common theme. Like and what is that? Technological, uh, excuse me, technological change, which transformed an era, which transformed the culture and people's lives. And the, and the other part of it is the book is one of the most innovative books I had seen in years. When that book came out a couple of years ago, it has the most beautiful pencil drawings, and it's a great story. You know, it's this young orphan in this big, beautiful train station. You're, you're referring to... Hugo. The book. The book. The invention of Hugo Cabret. And it's the perfect book. You know, there's a lot of reluctant boy readers, and they just get totally engrossed, and then they can go see the movie. Now, the artist, though, is, is, is a little bit different here, because you don't really hear words. Right. But there's that transition again, that technology. Well, the transition was from silent films to sound, which changed people's lives, changed people, people lost jobs, industries were burgeoning from it. Just imagine, Charlie Chaplin was the most famous human being that ever lived in 1927. All because of silent films went to every culture, every continent on Earth except Antarctica. After 1927, his fame dwindled because films were nationalized, because they had to be spoken in the home language or the uh, indigent language of the culture. Let's also talk about Midnight in Paris. Mm. This is a, a what well, is specifically this is a connection though. This is not a book. This is no. a connection between artists and literary figures. Yeah. Now why was this so popular? You know, I I I think I was surprised that so many people could connect to it because it was so reminiscent of a literary and an artistic time. But I think people enjoyed it on different levels. You know, one just a great story and a fun love story and the other was thinking about wanting every another time always looking like where you wanted to live but it's gotten people interested in reading Ernest Hemingway or wanting to know about the artists it is amazing I mean some of the big names <laughs> popped up in this right. one Picasso Man Man Ray, Man Ray. Right. Right. Degas <laughs> all, all these Gertrude fabulous Stein. yes Gertrude Stein but the movie was came out early in the year and it's still getting recognition. Did it get a lot of nominations? Not think, a lot. Screenplay, Best Picture, right. Best Director, I believe those are, those are three of them. I'm not sure whether one of them got Best Actor or Best Actress in it. I, I, don't, don't, I, don't, so. I don't think so either. But it, it's, I can't believe how it, it is still very well received because it was released earlier in the year. The next movie we want to talk about, The Descendants. Mm. All right, this is a book that went straight and went to the movies, but has George Clooney in it. Yeah, well, and one of the things that's interesting, so The Descendants is a pretty good book. It's, you know, fine. It languished. It didn't do anything. And then the movie comes out and it gets, you know, all the accolades it gets. So what they do is, as you pointed out, they do a movie tie-in yes. jacket, and all of a sudden, instead of it being some obscure cover, they've got George Clooney. So everybody wants to bring George Clooney home. And they might even read the book. And so, Arnold, really quickly, you think he's going to win 
for best actor for this movie. I, the artist, uh, act, the French actor, looks like he's a. Uh, I, he's I, my the bet here. is on uh, Jean Dujardin okay. to win. Really? I mean, that's the most expressive face I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, all right. it is amazing what he can do with that face. Well, we'll have to see that. All right. Again, the, there's a live telecast of Madison Art Cinema that evening. Again, the information right there on the screen. Oscars in Madison, Madison's Academy Awards Gala happening Sunday, February 26th. For tickets, call this number 203-901-8868 or visit oscarsinmadison.com. Thank you both for being here. It's a lot of fun. Thank you Our very pleasure. Much. Thanks, Johnson. Oh, I just want to dish here. with you. All right. Thanks.